Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of dust flying around outside. And I thought it was smoke. I thought something was on fire, but it's just the construction site down the street kicking up a lot of dirt. Okay. I was about to call 911. Um, okay. I'm here to talk about money. Money, 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 money. Money. <laughs> so if you watch my channel, I am assuming that you're probably someone who may be considering applying to grad school. You may already even be in grad school. But if you are considering applying, then you're probably wondering, Dojo, I want to go. But how the hell am I going to pay for it? Great question. I wish I had an answer for you. <laughs> I ask myself that question every year. It does not go away. But even though I don't have the absolute answer for you, I do have some information about some options. So today I'm gonna be talking just very generally about ways you can fund your graduate degree or higher education in general. Right out the gate, I wanna say that this is not going to be by any means an all encompassing video. I'm not gonna go into like excruciating detail about any of the options that I'm gonna be presenting to you. Think of this video as more of like a funding 101 type of information session almost about how you could potentially find money to fund your degree. And then down in the description, I if I can remember, if it's not there, someone please let me know. But I will be including a few links that can be helpful and hopefully get you started on your search. So let's get into it. Hey, hello, my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. <laughs> Okay, so boom. First things first, you want to make sure that you fill out your FAFSA. You want to make sure that you fill this out because it is used to determine a lot of, um, but not all, but a lot of your eligibility for funding. And the earlier you fill it out every year, the better. I make sure every year that I fill mine out before the end of January, just because the earlier you fill it out, the more money there is available to go around the longer you wait to fill it out the less money there is available the less funding opportunities you're going to probably get from the government if you aren't already familiar with what the fafsa is it is basically just a very long form that you fill out with your income information that they use to determine your financial need unfortunately or fortunately depending on your situation you may have to also include your parents income information when you do that or really just in general, the government tends to make a lot of assumptions that they really shouldn't be making about how you're gonna pay for your schooling. So yeah, it's not perfect. I absolutely hate it, but nevertheless, it is a necessity in most cases. So now on to your actual options, loans. I am just gonna go right ahead and get this one out of the way first. <laughs> It is everyone's least favorite topic and it is literally, well, let me not say literally because I don't know, but I am almost certain that it is everyone's last resort. You should probably only consider taking out loans once you have exhausted every other option I'm gonna be mentioning. No one wants to take out loans, but you may have to depending on your situation. So in terms of types of loans that are available to you, there are federal loans, which you can only receive if you complete your FAFSA. And these federal loans are gonna be your direct subsidized, direct unsubsidized, and direct plus loans. Direct plus loans are exclusively for graduate students. Um, there is a parent plus loan that undergrads can take out basically like it's a loan that's in your parents name but I'm not going to be talking about that that is a conversation for you and your parents or parents um, to have if you deem it necessary <laughs> but in general with federal loans there are a lot of different kind of like terms and caveats to each one and i am not going to go through everything in this video because then 
we'd be here forever. So just make sure that if you complete your FAFSA and you are offered a subsidized or unsubsidized loan, or if you're a graduate student and you decide that ultimately you have to take out an additional Direct Plus loan, just make sure that you read the terms and conditions very carefully. The biggest things to pay attention to are required credit checks for some of them. Um, I think subsidized loans don't need credit checks but the other two do i'm almost certain borrowing maximums both per year and also total borrowed overall interest rates and when it is that you become responsible for paying the interest and deferment periods all of those things combined are going to contribute to determining when and how much you will have to pay once all is said and done and you start paying back your student loans. The other type of loans are private loans. These are gonna be loans that come from your banks or other financial institutions. I have never taken out a private loan myself, nor do I recommend it, but I have heard and read that some private loans can offer lower interest rates and less fees than federal loans do um, but that is highly dependent on your credit so just again make sure that if you decide to take out a loan um, that you read the terms and conditions very carefully understand what you're signing for because I know that when I was starting undergrad I was kind of just adding loans willy-nilly not only because I needed the money to literally pay for school and pay for my living expenses but also because i wasn't fully aware of how quickly loans can add up and when you're paying them back how many factors contribute to how much you have to pay every month it's just read carefully <laughs> is all i can say just read very carefully before you do anything involving a loan now on to the free money you're gonna see why i put that in quotations in a minute so to start off we have scholarships scholarships everyone loves a good scholarship scholarships are genuinely free money you get a scholarship and you never have to pay that money back you don't have to do anything in particular for that money that money is yours typically a scholarship will offer a set amount of money for maybe one academic year but some scholarships may offer funding for multiple years as long as you do like an annual renewal process type of situation. In general, you don't necessarily have to fill out the FAFSA in order to get scholarships. There are plenty, and I mean plenty, <laughs> of scholarships that are strictly merit-based and you can just, you know, fill out an application write some essays, get some recommendation letters, and that's it. However, there are some financial need-based scholarships that you can only qualify for if you complete your FAFSA. Scholarships can be awarded by the government, or either the federal government or your state government. They can also be awarded by your institution as well as private organizations and foundations. But regardless, there are entire websites that are literally dedicated to just listing every possible scholarship there is available out there. All you have to do is dedicate the time to search for and apply for them. A word of caution though, <laughs> please, 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 read through a scholarship's application requirements and vet the organization offering the scholarship before you apply. I've come across a few scholarship scams in my day. Haven't fallen for any of them, but I've seen them. Do not, I repeat, do not pay any money or send any weirdly personal or sensitive information like your social security number with a scholarship application. It is 100% a scam. Just don't do it, please. <laughs> so just be sure that you are reading very carefully and doing your research about these organizations. On to grants. Like scholarships, most grants are genuinely free money. However, grants are more likely to come from the federal government, uh, for example, like Pell Grants. 
So you will need to complete the FAFSA and demonstrate some financial need in order to get those. But grants can also be awarded by your institution or by outside organizations and foundations. And if you are a graduate student or will be a graduate student, there are a couple of extra options available to you. These are going to be your fellowships and other research grants. A fellowship is a type of grant that is typically only available to graduate with students. There are a few fellowships that are awarded to undergrad students, but as far as I can see, they are pretty far and few between, um, but they are out there. You just got to look for them. Unlike regular scholarships, fellowships often span the course of multiple years right off the bat, and they will often cover the full cost of your tuition and some even offer an additional monthly stipend. But fellowships, in my view are kind of where the freeness comes in in the most basic sense no you don't need to pay fellowship money back so yes it is technically free however i have come across a few fellowships that come with like conditions or expectations that you will fulfill certain requirements um, either while you're still in grad school or post grad school. For example, you may be required to complete a specific program or hold a job in a certain area of interest for a set amount of time. It really varies from organization to organization, but I have come across fellowships, one of which I <laughs> plan to apply to um, this upcoming year. Um, that do have like expectations that you will do certain things as a recipient of this fellowship. Like I've been saying, it's just really important to make sure that you're reading application requirements. And a similar caveat goes for like other outside research grants. Um, you are expected to generate a significant body of research with the money that you are receiving. Um, that's why they're called research grants. <laughs> if you get the money for the research grant and you don't do research with it, it's gonna be a problem. And lastly, work study or just working in general. I went over work study and working while you're in grad school in an entire separate video that I did before the summer. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already, but I thought I would just include it just very generally briefly in this video because it is technically a source of funding. So work study. Work study does require that you fill out the FAFSA. That is the only way you can be awarded work study. You have to fill out the FAFSA and you have to demonstrate financial need. There is a literal box that you have to check while you are completing your FAFSA that asks you if you want to be considered for work study and you have to check yes on that box. If you do not, they will not consider you for work study. So just be on the lookout for that. So for work study, the federal government will award you a set amount of money and will present it in your financial aid package along with other sources of funding that they are offering to you. This is because they are expecting that you will use the money that you get from that work study to pay for education expenses like your tuition and books and what have you. Work study is another example of free money. For work study, you have to find an on-campus work study position and you have to work for the money that you were awarded. If you don't find a work study position by a predetermined date that is set by your institution, I think it is, your work study reward will be rescinded. That money will literally just disappear. Poof, gone, bye bye. You don't get it. You have to get a work study job on campus in order to receive that money. So, free. <laughs> and outside of that, just working in general, working a non work study job is something that a lot of students, including myself, do. There are lots of different non-work study positions that are available both on and off campus, part-time, full-time. It's really up to you to decide what's best for you. Again, all of that information is in that other video that I did. So please go watch that if this is something that you're wanting more information on. So that's pretty much it. Um, I didn't want to make this video too, too long. 
um, I kind of wanted to just give like the bare bones information that you might be looking for and then from there you can kind of outsource and do your own searches. Like I said, I will be including just a few links down in the description just so you can get a little bit more information and possibly start your search if funding is something that you are really in need of. Is that all I have to say? I think so. Yeah, I think that was it. So with that being said, <laughs> so with that being said, uh, thank you for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. Uh, leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. If you know of any resources that may be able to help someone find funding, please, please, please put it in the comments down below. We are not gatekeepers here on my channel, okay? We share the knowledge, we spread the wealth, all right? <laughs> So please, if you have some resources that can help people, share them down below. Thank you. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and click that little notification bell so you don't miss my next upload. And I'll see you in my next one.